Once you're ready to vaccinate the dog, we have three simple steps. Number one, don't get bitten. Number two, make sure the vaccine gets in the dog. And number three, make sure everybody knows the dog is not vaccinated. Remember, while catching and vaccinating dogs, the dogs are under our care and everyone on the team has an obligation to ensure that the dogs are not harmed. So move quickly and efficiently following these three steps for completing the vaccination as quickly and safely as possible to reduce stress and discomfort to the dog. Dog owners will also be very appreciative for your attention you're showing to their dog's well-being. Once we have a dog restrained or in a net, it's absolutely critical that we don't let ourselves or anyone else get bitten. It is the vaccination team's responsibility, not anyone else's, to make sure that no one gets bitten. Remember, the dog can be extremely afraid when in the net and will bite anything that gets near its mouth. Many bites happen because a catcher is distracted and lets their hand get too close to the dog's mouth. Dogs can also bite if they are handled poorly in ways that cause them pain, fear, or discomfort. The best way to avoid getting bitten is to make sure the dog is being handled properly in the first place. Now that we've done all this work, we need to make sure the vaccine gets inside the dog's body. While this may seem obvious, this is the part of the vaccination process that is the most overlooked and the most prone to mistakes. The rabies vaccine won't be effective at all if it's accidentally injected into the fur or if the vaccine leaks out because the needle's not tightly attached. Correct technique is also needed to reduce pain to the dog. The simple method to verify that you have the needle positioned correctly is called a vacuum test or the pullback technique. When you're ready to inject the vaccine, simply pull back one or two milliliters on the syringe handle and then let go of the handle. If you're properly positioned and the needle is tight, there will be a vacuum pressure which pulls the handle back to its original location. Now you're ready to inject the vaccine into the body. If you don't have vacuum pressure, identify the problem and make the necessary corrections. Repeat the vacuum test and inject once vacuum pressure is confirmed. So which is better? Subcutaneous vaccination or vaccination into the muscle tissue? Intermuscular vaccination is the least prone to positioning mistakes, but can be more painful for the dog. While subcutaneous technique is usually less painful, but can be more prone to mistakes, especially if the dog is in a net. So we recommend that dogs and nets are vaccinated in the muscle, inserting the needle at a 90 degree angle to the body into the thick back muscles that are halfway between the top of the hips and the spine, as shown here. For dogs that are being restrained with, without a net, then we recommend subcutaneous vaccination. To do this, find an area with loose skin, such as the skin along the back, pull the loose skin, and then insert the needle into the tent at a slight angle as shown here. Never vaccinate the face, head, or tail of the dog or any other animal. And remember, the vacuum test must always be done before injection. Once you're done vaccinating, remember to discard the needle in a sharps container. The needle must be replaced after every injection. If kept clean, the syringe can be used five times before changing. If either the syringe or needle is contaminated before use, discard and replace immediately. Great, so now the dog's vaccinated. But how do people know? How do you know which dog has already been vaccinated? Kamu yang memiliki solusinya. Ini. The collar lets us and the community know that the dog's been vaccinated. We put a collar on every dog vaccinated. Let's have a look to see how it's done. The dog collar should be long lasting and able to be put on the dog while still inside the net. Currently, there are two collar designs that we can recommend. A plastic collar like this with an automatic lock is a great option. It's easy to carry and fast to put on. The downside of the collar is that if it's too tight, the dog will be uncomfortable and work hard to break it. The correct tightness is when two fingers can be easily inserted between the collar and the neck, as shown here. The other collar option is to use a nylon webbing material, like that commonly used on backpack straps. 
cut to a length of 75 centimeters. These collars are cheaper than the plastic collar, and the knot will not fail over time like the plastic lock, but it takes longer to learn how to fit and secure properly. The knot used is a square knot, tied as shown here, right over left, left over right. Care must be taken to avoid the mustache effective slip knot. The procedure for passing both types of collars through the net is the same. Two long surgical forceps should be used. These ensure that the hands are kept as far away from the dog's mouth as possible. This is the most dangerous part of the vaccination procedure. Bare hands should never be used, and the dog's head should be kept in the net at all times. Once positioned correctly, the two ends of the collar should come out of the same hole in the net. Pull each end of the collar while ensuring that it is not caught in any part of the net. If it is, then the collar should be removed and repositioned. The collar should be secured, excess length cut off, and the lock or knot pushed back through the hole in the net. The dog can then be released. When releasing the dog, everyone should step away from the net, except the catcher holding the net while the other team members control traffic. The catcher releases the dog in a direction where it can run away freely and safely. When the dog is being held for vaccination, it is the vaccinator's responsibility to put on the collar, not the owner. The team may guide the owner to assist in collaring the dog, but should not leave until the dog is collared. Never give the collar to owners expecting them to fit it later. They won't. Remember, the collar is the only way to easily know if a dog has been vaccinated. So make sure the collars go on immediately, and then everyone will know that you've done your work well. Collars should not be placed on puppies, since they will grow and the collar may choke them. Non-toxic care coloring, paint, or livestock markers can be used to properly mark puppies for survey purposes. Collars should only be applied to growing dogs if the owner is present and agrees to monitor and loosen the collar as the dog grows. For achieving high vaccination coverage and ensuring support of dog owners, make sure that the community is fully informed at least two days before planned vaccination activity. While vaccinating, remember that engaging with dog owners is a great opportunity to educate them about rabies prevention and that killing dogs is not an effective way to control rabies. The impact of vaccination to control rabies is highest when puppies and roaming dogs are targeted for vaccination. Roaming dogs are the frontline immune barrier for stopping the virus. If any dogs are observed to show clinical signs of rabies, follow the rapid response protocol as outlined in the guidelines for mass dog vaccination by World Animal Protection. Sekarang, mari kita berbicara tentang keselamatan. Semua tim vaksinasi memiliki dokter hewan, dan kami telah bersumpah untuk mengurangi penderitaan hewan. Ketika menangkap anjing dan melakukan vaksinasi, anjing berada dalam penanganan medis kami, dan kami memiliki kewajiban untuk meyakinkan anjing tersebut tidak tersakiti. As a general rule, do not catch and vaccinate seriously ill animals. Once the dog is in a net or being restrained, observe the dog at all times for any signs of physiological distress. If the dog's gums become purple, release the dog immediately. Jika anjing mengalami sesak nafas, darah keluar dari hidung anjing atau hidung anjing tertutup oleh jaring, segera lepaskan anjing tersebut. I think you guys know that I've been bitten several times when I've been out vaccinating dogs. 
but I've never been afraid because I've had the full course of pre-exposure vaccination. The full course of pre-exposure vaccination takes at least three weeks to complete and make sure that all vaccination team members have their three shots before heading out to vaccinate dogs. Ketika Anda bekerja seperti kami, Anda akan mengendarai sepeda motor sepanjang hari. Semua anggota tim menggunakan helm, celana panjang, sepatu cat yang menutupi jari kaki agar terlindungi. Ketika Anda mulai fokus pada anjing, terkadang Anda tidak melihat datangnya mobil atau truk, sehingga Anda harus tetap mengawasi jalan dan bekerja sama agar tetap aman. If someone gets bitten, immediately get the wound under running water and wash with soap for 15 minutes. This is a very important step to reduce the risk of rabies transmission. And you need to keep the wound under running water for 15 minutes. 15 minutes! After 15 minutes have passed, go immediately to the nearest rabies center or health clinic so you can be examined by a doctor and given the necessary post-exposure treatment, which may include both vaccine and hyperimmune serum. This is the only way to be sure that you don't become infected with rabies. There is no effective treatment for rabies once clinical signs appear. A mass dog vaccination, supported by responsible dog ownership and humane dog population management, is the essential ingredient for effective rabies control. But why is it so important to find, catch, vaccinate, and collar all these outside roaming dogs and puppies that are so fast, so clever, so difficult to catch? Because those are exactly the dogs that we need to recruit to kill the rabies virus. Those are the dogs that we want on our team. Those are the dogs that we want armed with the antibodies so that no matter where the virus tries to spread, it will be stopped by the antibodies in our dogs. This is why we work so hard. This is why we don't give up. This is why we can't stop until this deadly virus is eradicated from our planet forever.